Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and I've got something special for you this time. We're going to be doing our first ever guest demo with Renato Roldan. Renato is a talented artist currently living in Barcelona. He's also a super cool dude, and he whipped up a really cool piece here. He combined Cyberpunk 2077 with Tifa from Final Fantasy VII. And, I mean, when he showed me this, I was like, well, I wish I had thought of it. So, it's absolutely brilliant, and I think you're going to really enjoy this. So, you hear me talk all the time. I'm going to stop now. Here's Renato. Hi, everyone. This is Renato3XL. You can find me in YouTube and Instagram. This is going to be my first voiceover tutorial. Um, so I want to thank Sutransis, Mike Henry, uh, for giving me this opportunity to do this video and break the ice uh, with this. So what I'm going to try to explain here is the process I have been following for this image my crossover between Tifa and Cyberpunk that probably are the, the two games that I want the most to play next year. Um, so I will try to explain my process in Procreate. I've been using it for three years now and for me it's super super helpful uh, in my daily basis. So here we go! Basically, what I usually start with is what I think everyone else do, is a really rough sketch. I try to, to make it loose and to make it something that has some energy into it. I don't take so much attention in, for example, composition or anatomy or I'm not trying to make things look great at this stage because I know I'm just trying to find that uh, happy mistakes that occur when you just let yourself go and as an artist I think I am the kind of artist that uh, I do over so many times the same stuff I, I really work on the sketch just to have the final sketch that I really need to don't put so much of my imagination at that stage when I have to do the, um, the inking or something like this. Uh, I want things to be clear for me. Um, and this is the, the moment when I just let myself flow and let myself investigate and experience what is behind all those crazy lines so as you can see i'm starting with uh, some stuff here you can you have seen probably a small uh, change in the drawing uh, i did this with liquify that i think in procreate is a very very useful tool because it allows me to to move stuff really fast and and without almost uh, well, without any uh, loading time, like it happens in Photoshop, that you have to open an, an op another window and then move stuff and it wakes like hell. So in Procreate it's super easy just to tweak stuff with Liquify. So I use it a lot. I recommend you to, to play with it uh, because it's really, really useful just to nail the the shapes or the other lines that you're looking for as you can see now uh, this is probably the fourth attempt to to have a proper sketch um, now i think i'm really digging into something more anatomically more accurate i i'm taking care on the shapes uh, more in depth um, looking for a pretty face that has the expression that I want uh, and more or less when I have I have it nailed it um, I do another layer I grab my brush that I use for almost everything uh, I know some of you have well lots of you have asked me in my Instagram what brush do I use and the answer is pretty uh, simple it's 
dry brush or dr drying sorry <laughs> um, it's in the inking folder uh, and I use it for almost everything I use it for sketching and I use it for making the inks for inking um, so basically I use that brush and another one that I bought in Gumroad that is called Merced the Cartoonist the Cartoonist um, that I use it for shading basically uh, it has a, a, some texture in it and I, I really like how it, it blends um, things uh, so I use these two uh, brushes here you can see that I'm still working on the sketch uh, there are parts that I'm not super happy with it so I just do another layer and I overdraw everything so I wanted a slightly different version for the left arm and I just overdraw it I think I'm not so good at inking um, especially if I go to traditional uh, it's really hard for me to, to do it so I try to uh, make an effort to, to get all those lines that I really want um, and something that I'm proud of I'm trying different techniques so I guess it's just a matter of trying for this one I wanted something that is not super uh, recharge with detail so as you can see it's basically the the outline of everything and some small uh, scratches for giving a little bit of texture but basically it's not a super recharged drawing there are some stuff that I just do it on a way so basically different designs on the clothes or improvising a little bit there are minor things and I as you can see now I'm still doing sketches to get the, the proper stuff uh, below to just do the, the good ink over so now that I have almost everything set I start coloring for coloring I, I just do first of all flat colors for everything I try to not go so crazy with it I just uh, try to give a, a basic color for all the parts especially because I used all these layers after as a, a selection tool uh, or a selection um, as a selection itself uh, to make some shading and to to do the final rendering so for me the only important thing is to have a great balance for example here I'm, I'm painting the jacket uh, and I remember being not so uh, happy with the color so I just take the the color I, I paint the jacket and then I twist a little bit the colors with with the adjustments uh, because the the hair and the jacket was uh, too similar so I just change it for this one I was not so uh, especially interested in color so I just pick up uh, the ones that fit to me I didn't want to use pure black or white I just use uh, pure white for like um, the bright uh, spots in the in the eyes or something like this something that is really really uh, highlighting but if you can see the jet the t-shirt uh, even if it's white I use a clear gray so you don't have like absolute values now it's time for some shading uh, I usually don't use this method because what I have done is just to paint over uh, a purple uh, layer and I'm erasing uh, the places where I think it should be some light I usually draw the the, um, the shadows I know that uh, lots of artists don't do that way but I feel more comfortable doing it like this 
But with this one, I wanted to do something different from just my own sake and, and just for experimenting and having some fun uh, doing different things in my in my usual pipeline. So what I did is is that that thing I I just put a whole um, layer and here I'm just erasing. I didn't want to have like rough edges edges. Uh, so I used that brush that I told you, the Merced Cartoonist, to erase a little bit the edges to have like a small blends between um, dark and light, not to have a, a rough edge there. Um, so here you can see that I'm drawing another layer of, of shadows. It can be understand as a occlusion pass like the shadow that, that happens when two things are too close, but it's really not. It's something that adds contrast and add more values to that flat shadow that I have. But basically it could be understood as a occlusion pass. So I'm just trying to give more values and, and a little bit more depth to that flat floor. Here I'm adding some light to the main spaces um, and I felt like I need some more contrast on, on, the, uh, on the different shapes. So I had the fill light coming from below uh, that contrasts a little bit to the, to the actual ambience. So I pick up a pink light. I, just add it from below and I paint it quite um, blurry. And this is probably the part um, that I struggle the most, that is the backgrounds. I don't mean I don't do backgrounds, but when I'm following, um, when I'm doing something that is character based, uh, it's hard to me to change from character to, to background. So I try to cheat a lot. And as you can see, I'm trying to do some simple shapes and uh, lights and something that, that could work for me, but it didn't. So I, I went for the actual proper way to do backgrounds. That is, take some reference. Don't try to use your imagination to do something that you're not comfortable with. So I just pick up several images from the game and I try to understand how they did that and where they put the uh, focus for the audience. Uh, so I just create some shapes like you can see it's a really really rough sketch um, of shapes like cubes and, and um, something really low poly. But I'm adding some details. I'm trying to put lights, I'm trying to add depth to it, um, having different tones, having different um, shapes inside the big shapes. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm trying to add some contrast between um, the in the background, I mean. Um, so I'm adding some different colors. Um, I know that the background is going to be basically greenish or bluish, so adding some purple to it and especially because I saw that all the cyberpunk uh, images that you can find around they have this huge contrast between uh, colors so they have like a monochromatic palette for the basic background and then they put some neons into it um, huge shapes with lights uh, like purples or oranges or green, something that really pop out uh, the background. As I said, I'm trying to add perspective and, and depth to it, so uh, darker areas will make that shadows, um, lighter areas will pop up the brighter spaces or the brighter places of the background. And I'm trying just basically to have something that won't compete so much with the actual character, but would 
help him to help her in this case uh, to sell the idea that she's living in a cyberpunk place full of lights and a big city um, with uh, all this technologically uh, stuff so basically I'm, I'm doing it following what I said uh, the images that I, I found out uh, you have this big screens with Japanese images and to eat. I just, as you can, as you can see, I just have um, a shape that looks like someone uh, because I know I would end up blurring it. So I don't take so much care on how the actual shapes are because I know they are going to be blurry. So the de the level the level of detail is not so so big. So I'm just shading everything i'm trying to to get those values out of everything so small lights sell distance uh, big screen sells uh, um, big screen sells the magnitude of the city and when i find places that are too um, to flat I just add some values within the same colors I love adding glows because it's something that I grew up with um, smoke also sells quite much the idea of depth so I add some fog uh, into it uh, I like so much when I, I work with this uh, adding some layers and layers and play with the uh, modes of, of exposure because as I said I love happy mistakes and you will find that just adding something and blur it uh, you will find several things that happen um, and it's it's super fun to play with this spot that you can see in the background is something that uh, it's called bokeh uh, that it happens with the lenses so I usually add them because they add like a realistic touch to the backgrounds and it also sells depth and it's something that I think it's uh, already it already understands our brain already understands it as something that is in the background and, and it I think it's it's quite cool to, to have them. I use it a lot as a trick. As I needed some contrast with the background I, I wanted to do a motorbike uh, for Tifa I'm not a, f a fan of doing vehicles because uh, I end up not doing it so well so I just wanted to put a glimpse of uh, how it, there's something there so I just pick some shades I try to uh, separate them in big and small and as you can see now I try to get that feeling of the Kaneda um, bike from Akira and I start putting some stickers into it. Uh, they are basically from my friends uh, Thinkete and Susie Brouillon and Cedrancis but I, I felt like the, it, they just add uh, noise to the, to the motorbike so I end up removing them. Now you can see that I don't have a template for my signature, so I do them all the time, every time I do a, um, an image, but anyway. So this is the final touches that I wanted to add to the image. I want something that looks glitchy. Uh, so I start playing with the final image and I went a little bit far so I end up removing it but talking to a friend uh, she showed me he showed me um, a creature that created that he created and it looked like a small robo chocobo so I thought it was a great idea and and something that he would appreciate it to to have that creature in my in my image, so I just started from scratch that creature. I tried to place it 
over the the motorbike and as you can see i'm just following the same steps as i did with tifa but just in a faster way so i create a, a fast sketch uh, for it in this case in wide because uh, i could see better what i'm drawing but color doesn't matter so much um, it's not the key it's not the key thing to to this one so i start with this and then i lower a little bit the opacity to see what is below i add some big shapes in colors just to have that difference between chest and the legs and the neck uh, so i have that that color contrast and i start adding the line work i usually don't do it this way i usually do the sketch and then the line work and then the color but as this was uh, something that it's over everything and below the image is already painted I wanted the shapes to just give me the the a glimpse of what is uh, the character so I can add the line afterwards so that's what I'm doing now I'm just doing um, the lines just to have all the detail that I have on Tifa to have it on that small chocobo robot and it just add in lines and a little bit more depth to to the character design and once we have the the whole character uh, I will start shading so I pick up the same color of the shadow layer for Tifa. I basically follow a little bit the same, well, I follow the same line direction because if not, it will pop out in a bad way. I, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the I, I also erase the hard edges with um, the Mercer the cartoonist. Uh, brush and I add a layer of light just to have all that scratches and um, every almost every edge um, to have a lighter uh, line just to mimic or, or to try to explain that there's a bevel there not sure if that makes sense but basically it's a very simple way to just add volume and, and detail to a character. So you can see I'm still adding some details. And next thing will be to add a little bit more depth to that shadows a little bit of glow and that feel light coming from below and basically that's going to be it I'm, I'm just going to to have to move it a little bit because there's a tangency between the head of the chocobo and the line of the of the motorbike so that's a little bit annoying so i'm going to remove it that's it and here's the final image as you can see i have added some glitches and some color aberration because i think it blends with it blends well with the mood and the style of uh, cyberpunk uh, and that's it basically uh, i hope you have like it i hope i can make more of this um, you can see my stuff in my youtube channel renato 3xl uh, and in my instagram also renato 3xl and i hope to see you guys soon So 
So a big thank you to Renato for participating in this. Please show him some love. Uh, here are his links so that you can uh, go ahead and check him out. And I'll include those links also down in the description. So please let me know if this was cool and if you'd like to see more of these because I'm happy to get more guests and just uh, keep the variety really nice for you guys. And as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and other videos, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you on the next one. If you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.